everyone I know that surfs, that's like an old man, just having the best life ever. And uh, that's, <laughs> that's gonna, how I feel. That's going to be me when I'm like 50, <laughs> 60 years old. I'm going to be chilling, enjoying the sunset on a longboard, and just like living life to the fullest. As cliche as it sounds, <laughs> I think it, it literally, it, everything that revolves around the surfing lifestyle is health, wellness, totally. happiness, and fun. And that's how I choose to live my life. And that's how I reconnect with nature. Hello friends, this is part two of the three-part interview with Chris Johnson, my old roommate slash good friend. He summoned Mount Whitney. If you didn't look at the other interview, that is part one. Please look at that by following the links below. Today I'm hiking in Tonto National Forest, as you can see in Arizona. Lots of beautiful cactus. And I hope you enjoy these interviews. And if you do, please like and subscribe to my channel because it really helps get the word out. Thank you. So Chris, what is your favorite way to connect with nature? You're looking at it. Being at the beach? This is it, yeah. But you're um, a surfer, right? I'm a surfer. Uh, I didn't grow How up surfing. Long? I I, um, I grew up in, in the Bay Area, uh, kind of not too far away, but just over the hill from Santa Cruz. But uh, it wasn't like, it wasn't a thing to go to the beach, really. Um, mm -hmm. It definitely wasn't a thing to surf. Um, I got into it. Actually, this is a pretty funny story, and I was thinking about <laughs> this the other day. Let's uh, hear it. So I had two buddies, one of which is still like my be like best friends. He lives down in San Diego. He got into surfing with his other friend. And back then, they had no idea what they were doing. They just bought some random boards and like sent it over the hill. Yeah. And we're just messing around and got nowhere. Mm -hmm. And... That's how I kind of like, that was my introduction to it. Um, actually, no, there's a third source. <laughs> I have to backstep a little bit. My sister is actually the first one oh. who took me surfing when I was uh, a kid. She, she's been like my outdoor enthusiast mentor. Uh, oh, yeah. She's 10 years older than I am. Um, I'm the youngest of four, she's the oldest. And she's total badass. Uh, she has way crazier stories than me, <laughs> and she got into surfing a little bit, just messing around, and she took me, uh, we just like went to Santa Cruz on a longboard, and she made me wear a life vest because she didn't think I could swim at the time. <laughs> I was I was pretty young. Yeah. I must have been like, I don't know, eight or nine. Oh, or that's like that. young, yeah. And, For surfing? Uh, wow. Yeah, it was fantastic, and I, I didn't like get into it after that, though. That was just like something I did when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So my buddies, um, they started messing around. So I joined them one afternoon. I was like, oh, this is cool. Like, I love this. I've always wanted to get into surfing, but it was inaccessible mm -hmm. um, to me. And I didn't have anyone to, like, go with or, like, I had no business, like, swimming in the ocean or, you know, like, mm -hmm. especially in Santa Cruz. It's cold water. It's yeah. not a place to, like, it's not like nice Santa Barbara where the water's, you know, nice 70, 75 in the summer. Right. Um, and then, Beautiful. funny enough, like, I used to play football growing up in high school and you know I was like the only blonde kid on the team and my coach at the time used to call me Spicoli that was my 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 nickname um, and if you've ever seen the movie Fast Fast Times at Ridgemont High it's like pretty iconic like oh, movies I think it was I in the like 80s 90s it. era and Spicoli is, that... is like this token surfer blonde dude <laughs> who just gets stoned in his late to class and he's got this really funny role and for some reason that was my nickname on the t for like three just years in football blonde. it yeah. all started with with my one coach and mm -hmm. uh i don't know if that kind of like just cemented that memory in my head of like oh yeah i want to be a surfer that's cool <laughs> let's do that and uh yeah it just kind of worked out and then i moved to san diego with you mm -hmm. And I had a board, and I uh, still had no idea what I was doing. Yeah. Just would send it over to like Ocean Beach or Pacific Beach and attempt to surf with pretty little progress. Um, had the complete wrong board to start on, as I found out later. <laughs> Met a guy who like surfed. He wasn't like a really good surf. I mean, he, he knew how to surf a little bit, like on a bigger board, and he was super nice and like took me out, and we were friends and. That was probably like the most progress I made in the mm -hmm. book because I was actually like catching waves. Nice. Whereas before I'd literally go paddle out and just not like <laughs> not make any progress. And having like a guide or a mentor yeah, was like really just what someone helped to like really push. just drive to the beach with and like mm -hmm. hang out and like go get a burrito afterwards. That's where mm -hmm. it starts. And yeah, so started doing that and that was awesome. That was probably like 
this start of like my surfing career. <laughs> um, but now you do it. Obsession, I would say. And out here a lot. Yeah. So then I, so San Diego, you know, I had, I had like what two years there, and right. I, I made pretty little progress, but I, I got the stoke, and that was the most important part. <laughs> and got the stoke. I, I like that. Then I moved to Santa Barbara. <laughs> I got accepted to UCSB. And my first year there, I ended up living literally on, like, o- oceanfront property overlooking the water. It was f- a fucking dream. dream. <laughs> I'll probably never have that again in my life. <laughs> hey, never say never. Never say never. That's right. <laughs> um, it was amazing. And I was a bike ride from uh, a couple of beaches where you could surf at. And all my buddies were, like, I lived in what's, like, was referred to as, like, the Volcom House, which, if you're in the surfing world, that's a pretty iconic house on the North Shore of Oahu. Oh, okay. It's like the Volcom House, basically. And so we had, like, one of my buddies had a connection to, like, the, one of the, like, uh, original investors to Volcom. And so we had, like, a big Volcom sign, the same one that they have oh, in the cool. house in Hawaii that they, like, have nailed to their railing out front. Um, and so we had that in college. So we were, like, you know, every house in Ivy had a name. Okay. And so we were, like, the Volcom house. And so it was, like, upstairs, downstairs. It was, like, I don't know, 15 boys, and everyone surfed, and everyone was total surf rat. So that's kind of, like, <laughs> yeah. how I got, like, fully into it. Still really sucked, um, but I, you know, I was, like, now, like, surfing every day and, like, making a little more progress, and I uh, just kind of, like, in the environment, like, full on, and just in a completely different, like, a full surf culture in that little, you know, Ivy totally. community where everyone's riding to the beach, everyone, like, it's beach lifestyle, it's amazing. I never wore shoes, it's fantastic. Yes. <laughs> um, I go home now, and all my friends make fun of me because they think my feet are gross. But, you know what? <laughs> Fuck you guys. My feet are very barefoot tough. Barefoot is yeah. the way. <laughs> barefoot, barefoot for life. Yes. Um, so, yeah, that's that's kind of... So, yeah, I had three years at UCSB, and... Three years? Yeah, three years. Um, and that's where I got, like, way better, but still, like, not that great. Um, and then here I am now. It's been, like... I think I've been surfing for... I want to say, like... If it was, like, when you started in San Diego, From when I, like, then... started, like, from the first time I, like, stepped foot on, not counting when I went with my sister, okay. it's been, like, 10 years. We'll say 10 years. Yeah. But, like, of actually surfing, it's been, like, maybe six years. And, like, since the point of leaving SB, traveling around the world, uh, all throughout Asia, yes. surfing some really, like, you know, really big surf in Indonesia, um, even Malaysia, which is not a surf destination. Yeah. <laughs> and hey. down, in, down in Mexico... And really just, uh, it fueled the fire and it's now like a sustained part of my life that really dictates where my life is going. And, uh, it led me out, it led me back here after my travels to settle down in Santa Barbara because I wanted to be by the beach. Um, and it's probably going to affect where I go from here, um, inland or not, like it's always going to be like a part of my life and it's a very unique sport because it's not just a sport it's it's like a legit lifestyle like For people sure. i don't know everyone that surfs everyone i know that surfs that's like an old man just having the best life ever and uh that's, <laughs> that's gonna, how i feel that's gonna be me when i'm like 50 <laughs> 60 years old i'm gonna be chilling enjoying the sunset on a longboard and just like living life to the fullest as cliche as it sounds <laughs> i think it it literally it everything that revolves around the surfing lifestyle is health wellness totally. happiness and fun and that's how i choose to live my life and that's how i reconnect with nature cheers to that i want to learn now you've just inspired me and hopefully all these other people <laughs> so you said that you did some surfing in asia where where have you explored in this world exactly like specific where have i been in the world yeah like all all in all or just like surfing destinations no just like where have you explored Um, this big beautiful planet okay (laughs) um well my first trip abroad this is a pretty good one uh, i went to brazil for the 2013 world cup nice that was my first time out of the country um, when I was living in San Diego with you, uh, mm-hmm. obviously we, we met a bunch of Brazilian friends, yes. a bunch of Brazilian boys. Um, and miss you, George, miss you, Vinny. Yeah, two, and uh, and Fabio. And Fabio, and, uh, yes. And two of them became like my really good, my really good friends. And uh, one of them reached out to me after I'd already moved. He's like, "Hey, man, if you ever, you know, want to come to Brazil, you got a place to stay." Mm-hmm. Um, and I told that 
So he's like, if you can, you know, pay for your plane ticket, like, you can stay at my house, no problem. I'll take care of you. And Very I, sweet. It was the, World, <laughs> the World Cup was coming up, and it was going to be in Brazil, and they just announced that they, so Vinny and Fabio and all the boys that we know are from a town called Manaus, which is mm -hmm. uh, a really large city in Amazonia, which is a northern state of Brazil, it, straight in the Amazon. Uh, wow. It's one of the only cities in the Am in Amazonia that's that large. You know, it's got like over a million people, um, and the rest is just like jungle and like indigenous people and villages and stuff, and other smaller cities. But uh, that's definitely the largest. And they announced that they were going to build a brand new like ground up stadium just for the World Cup wow. to host like four games, which is insane. Uh, actually, Dang. very controversial. Yeah. Uh, it was a lot of money. It was a beautiful stadium. But, um, yeah, they did. And I was like, oh, man, this would be a pretty sweet opportunity <laughs> to take Vinny up on his offer. So I told this to my brother. And he's like, well, hey, I'll buy your plane ticket <laughs> if you take me with you. I was like, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Sweet. We, uh, we were off to Brazil, and we, we spent two weeks out there, and it was insane. I mean, these guys live very large, and they are super hospitable people. They love their culture, and they love to show off their culture, and it was amazing. We um, wakeboarded on the Amazon. We wow. uh, watched one of the Brazil games on my Vinny's dad's really nice like yacht on, on, the, on the river there. We uh, went to my buddy's river house. Uh, went, obviously went to the World Cup games, saw the USA take on Portugal and tie and almost win. It was incredible. Uh, eight, Epic a, first trip out of the country. Yeah, yeah it was <laughs> insane. So that was that was so fucking that was so fun. Yeah. And um, that kind of like you know it didn't give me the the give, give me the full on travel bug, but it definitely like I was like whoa this is I never really looked outward. I was pretty sheltered, I think, uh, mm -hmm. in that respect. I, was, I really like California a lot. And I was like, I don't really, California's pretty I don't really great. need to travel that much. <laughs> I'm fine. And I was like, wait, maybe I should, you know, travel a little bit. And then fast forward to 2016, uh, graduate college, had a couple job offers. Wasn't too stoked on. My buddy was like, hey, I'm going to Thailand. You should come with me. I just bought a one-way ticket. And... Uh, yeah. Kind of spur of the moment decision. I was like, you know what? Okay, I, mean, I got to do this now, right? That's what everyone says. So right. I did. And I bought a one-way ticket to Bangkok. And yeah, I spent about three and a half months out there. Um, started in Thailand. Spent about a month there bopping around. Um, that was a good intro to Asia. Mm -hmm. uh, totally, total culture shock. As you know, you spent a lot of time sure. there. Um but it was good because it's really easy to travel there. It's, yeah, it's very, exactly. tur it's very touristy, but like backpacker tourism. So right. it's it's nice. It's fun mm -hmm. to meet people and do that whole thing. Um, so, yeah, went up and down throughout Thailand, did some scuba diving for a couple weeks out in Koh Tao, did the full moon party, which is insane, <laughs> and then went off to Vietnam. And Vietnam was a beautiful country. We spent most of the time in the north. Uh, went to uh, Ha Long Bay, spent some time in Hanoi. Mm -hmm. And then we spent some time up in way northern Vietnam. Uh, did like this whole motorcycle tour uh, in a really remote area called Hazong. Um, we did, did like a six-day yeah, motorcycle tour. Have... Beautiful, like he, like very mountainous area. It reminded me a lot about Cal uh, of California because mm -hmm. the climate actually shifted in the north from like hot, dense jungle, sticky, buggy environment to like cool and um, big uh, like pine trees mm -hmm. and huge mountains insane it was so pretty and the road was really nicely paved and there was n no one really spoke English at all it was mm -hmm. it was super remote off the grid and I loved it every part of it we had about a crew of four at that point and we picked up a straggler <laughs> good guy yeah he followed us along he was awesome and then um let's see we went down south Vietnam went to, back to Hanoi down to Da Nang uh, Hoi An, which is kind of like a, if you ever are in, in the market for a suit, go to Hoi An. <laughs> Most of your clothes are probably made in Hoi An. Um, and you can get them for like a tenth of the price. All right. Great, great little yeah, town. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, let's see, left. I flew down to uh, Ho Chi Minh City for like a late, quick layover. And then moved on to Indonesia and there's I mean I can't really describe how amazing that place is it's mm -hmm. a surfer's haven obviously mm -hmm. it's uh, a yoga a yogi's haven it's it's everyone's haven it's beautiful 
Um, you can island hop. We uh, spent a lot. Bali was our home base. We mm -hmm. spent some time down in like Uluwatu in the, the Bukit, um, which is obviously some of the most iconic waves in the world. Um, got some really good surf down there, and then and then uh, did a little strike mission out to a really remote island called uh, Sumba, uh, which was an, a whole other story in and of itself. But beautiful beach, really remote, um, and got some amazing waves. And then went back to Bali. Um, and then we went over to Java, and Java is like the main island where uh, where the capital is, mm -hmm. um, up way up north. And we were kind of in western Java. Uh, we spent another like ten days out there, I believe, and that was that was home for me. That mm -hmm. was like the perfect mix of Sumba was very remote, and it was hard to like. If there was waves, it was fantastic, but there wasn't really anything else there, and it's very hard to get around. Mm -hmm. So it, so jo, uh, Java was a perfect mix of like remoteness like there wasn't a lot of tourism but like it was kind of like normal life the climate was really nice um you know you could have a little bike and ride around mm -hmm. and go to other towns and uh, a little more freedom there so i like that uh that aspect and we met a really good guy that owns a hostel out there and uh, i still to this day send him messages here Sweet, and there. nice send him photos like his instagram posts Aww. and stuff and uh, so that's really cool. I, I definitely going to go back there in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. And then uh, and then we got kicked out of Indonesia because our visas expired. Ooh. <laughs> so we were planning on staying like another like uh, half a month, like a couple more weeks. Yeah. And we found out we had to leave early. So if you ever go to Indo as an American, make sure you don't pay or you do pay to, to get the extension right when you get in there mm -hmm. or they'll kick you out. Well. So and then you have to do a visa run, which is basically leave the country, come right. back in. Yeah. So. I opted to go to Malaysia instead, and I had a nice little solo experience there. Sweet. Solo, I mean, yeah, I could I could too. talk a bunch about solo travel. You've done a ton of it. You know how I think important that is to, I don't know, just personal growth, yeah. I would say. It's huge. Definitely. That was oops, part two of this three-part interview series with Chris Johnson. Please follow the links below in the description to see the rest of the interview and I hope you enjoy it and please like and subscribe to this channel if you are